subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. If you've been observing Jupiter and Saturn in the night sky over the past few days or have been following the news, you know that the two planets are inching really, really, really close together and that culminates tonight on the night of December 21st of 2020 in an event called the Great Conjunction. The Great Conjunction is when Jupiter and Saturn align together as viewed from Earth and they appear to fuse together as one star or one body and they look like that when we view them from Earth. Incidentally, this Great Conjunction also falls on the night of the winter solstice. In this video, we'll take a look at what planetary conjunctions are, what great conjunctions are, what the deal is and why tonight's great conjunction is special and also a little bit about solstices. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Let's picture our solar system like a running track. Each planet sits in its path and it goes around in its track. Of course, over a period of time, two planets will align even though they're moving at different speeds and one will overtake the other parallelly as it continues moving along in its track. This is what a planetary conjunction is, but of course, as viewed from Earth. So in this racetrack model, our Earth is at the center. If you had been on Mars, for example, you would not have been able to see tonight's great conjunction. The planets would have appeared farther apart. Of course, planetary conjunctions occur with other planets as well and not necessarily planets that are in adjacent orbits. Jupiter and Saturn are the solar system's two largest planets and therefore when they form a conjunction, it's called a great conjunction. It occurs approximately every 20 years or so because that is when Jupiter overtakes Saturn in its orbit as viewed from Earth. Jupiter takes 11.86 years, approximately 12 years to go around the Sun and Saturn takes 29.46 years, approximately 30 years to go around the Sun. Jupiter and Saturn are said to be in a 5 is to 2 mean motion resonance. What that means is that for every 5 orbits that Jupiter completes around the Sun, Saturn completes 2. So 12 years into 5 orbits is the same as Saturn's 30 years into 2 orbits. Great conjunctions occur every 20 years as Jupiter overtakes Saturn, but every 60 years or every third great conjunction, the event occurs in approximately the same location in the night sky for us. There are sometimes even triple great conjunctions, which is when three great conjunctions occur in a year. That happens because of the apparent motion of Jupiter and Saturn in relation to Earth and as Earth moves around in its orbit. But triple great conjunctions are very, 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 very rare. There aren't going to be any in the 21st century. And the last one we had was in 1981. Planetary conjunctions in general are common, even though great conjunctions occur only once in about 20 years. But what makes this planetary conjunction and this great conjunction extremely special is that this is the closest the two planets have ever come in the past 400 years. Once again, it's not that the two planets are physically coming close to each other. Jupiter and Saturn are still very much in their own orbits. It's just that the Earth is positioned in such a way that the planets appear to align together and come really close together from our point of view. In other great conjunctions, other Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions, often there is a little bit of separation between the two. Jupiter and Saturn are typically about one degree apart in the sky, whereas tonight they are going to be less than one tenth of a degree apart. More importantly, a great conjunction has not occurred at night in the past 800 years. So when it comes to the night sky, tonight's event is quite rare. Such a close planetary conjunction will occur next on Jan 30th, 2048 with Venus and Saturn at dawn. The next great conjunction that we'll be able to see that will also be this close will be in 2080. The one before this occurred in 1623, but that was a little too close to the sun. And the one before that was in 1226, which is the one that occurred at night and was able to be seen clearly. 
almost 800 years ago. How do you observe the great conjunction? The best time to see it would be approximately 45 minutes to an hour after sunset in the southwest direction above the horizon. You can easily spot the great conjunction because it will either appear like a distorted or an elongated star or maybe like two fused planets. The moon will be much higher up to the left but you should see the great conjunction in time and quickly because the planets will set at around 7.30 pm. It will also be visible to everyone and it will be bright enough to be seen through light pollution as well so it can be observed from cities. However, only if there are clear skies with no clouds. If you've been looking all of these days, you would have noticed that Saturn is a little bit fainter than Jupiter and appears to the left above Jupiter. After tonight's great conjunction, Saturn would be on the opposite side of Jupiter. If you have a telescope or a pair of good binoculars, you will be able to see Jupiter's four Galilean moons, the biggest moons, and you would also be able to see Saturn's rings all as you normally would, but in the same frame. If you look through the telescope at the Great Conjunction, you can see both Jupiter and Saturn together in a single frame. So if you're not able to see it through a telescope, watch out for images tomorrow. Otherwise, there are also many live streams. A few of them will be listed in the description below. Now, everyone around the world will be able to see it but there is a group of people who will not be able to observe the great conjunction and those are the scientists who are currently in antarctica this is because at the south pole when the great conjunction occurs it will be the summer solstice the summer solstice at the pole is 24 hours of daylight and the sun does not set when it's summer solstice at the south pole Naturally, it's winter solstice at the North Pole where there is no sun for 24 hours. Solstices are the two days in a year when the Earth's axial tilt is at its maximum, which means that the Earth's poles have a maximum tilt towards the sun. So obviously, whichever pole is tilted towards the sun at 23.4 degrees will have continuous daylight for 24 hours and the opposite pole will be in darkness for 24 hours. In the northern hemisphere, summer solstice or the longest day of the year typically occurs on June 20 or 21 and this used to be called midsummer. This is winter solstice in the southern hemisphere. Winter solstice in the northern hemisphere occurs typically on December 21 or 22 right when Antarctica, right now, is bathing in continuous sunlight. There is no relationship between solstices on Earth and the Great Conjunction or any other planetary conjunction. Even if today had not been a solstice, the conjunction would have occurred nonetheless and would have appeared just as spectacular. But the fact that these two events coincide on the same day makes this Great Conjunction a little bit more special than it already is. Now, there is one final reason why this Great Conjunction will be historic. Galileo refined the design of the telescope and observed the Galilean moons, Jupiter's four largest moons, in January of 1610. These moons are, of course, Ganymede, Callisto, Europa and Io. He observed Saturn and its rings as well, but he could not make out what the rings were and he in fact thought there were two moons of Saturn. Now, Galileo was alive until 1642 and he of course was observing the night sky pretty regularly with his telescope and documenting and taking notes. So could he or any of his contemporaries have observed the Great Conjunction of 1623 through a telescope? Turns out, no, actually, and we know this because this great conjunction was too close to the sun and they knew not to point a telescope towards the sun. This means that if you have a telescope and after sunset, if you look at the great conjunction tonight and you spot Jupiter and Saturn in the same frame through your telescope, you are among the first group of humans in history to have ever observed this sight.